Welcome to my sewing room. Today we have such a wonderful show for you. It's all about machine wing needle entredeau. Let me show you exactly what that is. This wonderful ladies jacket has machine embroidery and inside the machine embroidery is wing needle entredeau just done back and forth and back and forth used as the fill in between each one of these stitches which originally were designed for cut work. This is a magnificent, absolutely elegant um, linen dress with the laces coming down the front and the wing needle entredeau even comes down and stops. You just press a little fixed button and stop it. It's kind of like tying it off and both of the laces have been attached or the, both sides of the lace have been attached with wing needle entredeau. This is the cutest little camisole and tap pants, which really is wonderful to use for sleepwear, as well as the camisole. Of course, they could be used for lingerie, too. The bow over here on the little camisole has been stitched down. The lace has been stitched onto silk using wing needle machine entredeau. Now, this dress I call the Royal Christing Dress. This is white batiste with lots and lots, let me open it up here for you, of machine embroidery on it. And where is the wing needle entredeau on this dress? Well, everywhere lace is attached to the dress, it has been attached with wing needle entredeau. So there's wing needle entredeau around the bodice of the dress, around the machine embroidery on the bodice. The laces that go down the side, the insertion that goes down the side has been attached with wing needle entredeau done in ecru. Usually I like to use the same color thread for my wing needle entredeau as the lace that I'm attaching, if it is indeed that I am attaching lace on a dress. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my very dear friend Sue Hausman, who is the host of America Sews. And now let's go on with this wing needle entredeau work. Wing needle entredeau is one of my favorite things in the whole world for heirloom sewing. Now, in order to do wing needle entredeau, you have to mark a line of some kind if you're just going to do decorative stitching. So here I've drawn straight lines or diagonal lines. Now, you can also mark your lines by pulling a thread. That's a little bit harder to do, but it's okay if you like to do that. There are two sizes of wing needles and also another nice needle to use for wing needle work, not wing needle work, but uh, hem stitching is a large uh, top stitching needle such as a 100, a 110, or a 120. I also use stabilizer behind wing needle work most of the time. Now then as you can see here, I've started my stitching just on the wing, on the line. And if you can see over here, I've done lots of different types of wing needle stitches uh, up and down and crossways also. Now there are all kinds of beautiful decorative stitches for stitching down lace. I love to use the little hearts. This is a tiny baby heart, the regular sized heart, some little dots. Then going across all of the different types of, of wing needle work, wing needle hem stitching. Absolutely every one of them magnificent. Now this is one of my very favorites. It's called the Baby Daisy Entredeau. And by the way, this is a great kind of a sheet to make. This is what I call a cheat sheet. I have put a uh, stabilizer behind it and down below I've just jotted down the stitch on your machine and the width and the length and what kind of needle. Let's move on across and just look at all of these different hem stitches. So many ways for hem stitching to look or wing needle work. This stitch is called Madeira Applique. Point de Paris or pin stitch. Then here is the actual hem stitching like was done on the old hem stitchers that came out around the mid 1800s. This is a very beautiful piece I think. It is called a hem stitch sampler. All different types of hem stitches on a very very beautiful quality of linen done with a wing needle. Now let me show you a little trick here. On the Baby Daisy Entredeau which has been stitched down this way. This can be uh, silk ribbon, it can be just floss, it can be silk ribbon floss, it can be any kind of ribbon you like just to weave it up and down and up and down. Just weave it in and out. It really makes a very beautiful decorative stitch. And now I would like to introduce you to my guest for this show, my very dear friend and colleague Sue Hausman. 
Sue is the Senior Vice President of Husqvarna Viking Sewing Machines. She is also the host of the television series America Sews. Sue, welcome to the show and thank you for being here. Oh, Martha, <laughs> thank you for inviting me. I sure appreciate it. And what fun we're having with hem stitching. Oh. This is my favorite thing to do. I love your blouse. It's just beautiful. Thank you. Well, my blouse is kind of a sampler of uh -huh. hem stitching uh -huh. and down the center front and also on the cuffs. This is actually hem stitching that we're now doing with the embroidery part of the sewing machine oh my goodness. where you actually put a wing needle in and embroider and I want to turn my cuff here and get a look at the placket. Just keep that in mind Martha. I'm going to show you a fastest hem you know, stitching I, method. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> my motto, you know, fast, faster, fastest sewing. Absolutely. And, That's the uh, title of your new book, I believe. Yeah, And I'm doing a little uh, blouse here that's ready to wear with one of the built-in uh, hem stitches. So it's fun to do that in On embroidery. The embroidery unit, okay. But you don't have to have embroidery because you can do this with the built-in stitches on the sewing machine. This little teddy bear, so Astrid cute. the Bear by Carolyn Russell Wall, has a wonderful little pin stitch effect uh, that was actually not done with a wing needle, was done with one of those large top stitching needles. A lot of people mm -hmm. like that. It's just simply personal preference. Isn't and it? Um, she also has another dress that's, that's actually hem-stitched on denim. So it doesn't have to be uh, a French sewing look. You could That's do right. hem stitching maybe on other things than clothing. This is a little linen envelope, you see, that you can actually slip something in and keep pictures or give a special note or gift or Wouldn't wedding. Wouldn't be nice to put a wedding invitation Wedding in or a wedding, <laughs> wedding wallet, maybe, oh, a wedding gift. Yeah. And then, of course, table linings, which is something that traditionally uh, we remember hem stitching. I do believe the name hem stitching has come from turning a hem and early, early years doing it by hand, and then on the old hem stitch machines. That's right. Um, some of the basics, Martha, and I know you know these, but for our viewers, uh, I like to use a fine thread most of the time in a color that matches the garment. Mm -hmm. A two-ply thread. You would not make clothing from this because, of course, it breaks so easily. But the finer the thread on both top and bobbin, the less it fills those holes. That's right. That's what I like about the so fine. so delicate and pretty. Mm -hmm. However, I have noticed that more and more people are doing hem stitching with the sulky weights, you know, yeah. the silky threads. And, of course, the different sizes of wing needle. Practice on scraps. That's my motto. The th fabric is so important. Natural fibers, linen I love, and something a little looser woven. Here's two examples of something that didn't hem stitch well. You know, a okay. synthetic okay. poly cotton that, uh, and of course, again, the tone on tone color. And I always do little practice sample swatches before I start on the garment. I think that's a good idea no matter what you're doing, especially with decorative work. Now, you mentioned stabilizer. Okay. I'm working with a linen, and I do have stabilizer underneath part of it. I'm going to tell you that my actual preference is to starch and not stabilize. And I'm simply touching my little entredeau stitch. I have a wing needle already in. I've threaded top and bobbin with that fine thread, and now all I do is sew. And I think, again, our, our viewers could experiment with starching and no stabilizer and stabilizer. What I usually do on a practice piece, you'll see it over here, is I have stabilizer under part of it and not under the other part and see which I like better. Well, I think that's always a good idea, just to see which one makes you happy. You know, isn't that the joy of sewing? It Every is. personal preferences and personal differences. Now, there's our favorite. Absolutely. That entredeau. Isn't Absolute, that beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. And, of course, there are like 13 different uh, wing needle stitches, and many people just try any stitch that sews forward and backward on your sewing machine. And you know, you can just experiment along and touch different ones. You don't have to do a whole row of each one. Stitches that have that forward and reverse action, try motion, and narrow them up and lengthen them, and shorten them, and experiment until you find the one that you like, or like on my blouse, combine a group of them for a hem stitch sampled garment. Well, I think that hem stitching is one of the most wonderful things that has come along in sewing in a long time. But you know what, Sue? There's nothing new under the sun. Hem stitching has been around mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. Sue, thank you so much for this lesson in hem stitching. And now, Sue and I have a beautiful piece of beautiful lingerie for you. Sue, this blue linen night shirt is absolutely beautiful and the tap pants that go with it. You can just see the beautiful release tucks, the wonderful machine embroidery that's around the collar and down the front. And as you go down, you will see that there is a beautiful uh, hem stitch that has been used to attach the release tucks. 
And you know, this is a fabulous cuff here. Oh, with well, the, okay. I have, I have to tell you, what I love about release tucks on bodies with fuller busts is that you can actually give a darted effect from the shoulder mm -hmm. and have a little fullness in the bust. So that's a perfect way to give a dart without a dart. That's called a good fitting technique thing. Uh -huh. But these are hem-stitched release tucks. Oh, that's what we're oh, going to so talk it's about. really beautiful. Let me share the tap pants also. They are absolutely adorable. And the hem stitching, of course, is done to do the hem there. Actually holds the hem in. Pulled, now, how did you get those? One? Oh, pulled. pulled thread hem stitching is what oh, we're going to talk about. Really and you, nice. men you mentioned machine embroidery. This is machine embroidery for people who don't have a machine embroidery machine, oh. but you do it by machine, so I'm going to give a trick. Oh, right. Well, that's good <laughs> because everybody doesn't have one yet. No, okay. and I'm so glad you like that. Now, you mentioned oh, the placket, so beautiful. and actually this placket, I'll pull it over so they can see it, is done in the seam. And Martha, this is the pattern I know that you did, and it's wonderful to have your placket in the seam so that you can finish it with your hem stitching and not have to bother with an extra bias strip or anything. But I promised a minute ago to talk about my fastest placket. Okay. And this, of course, is that Entredeau hem stitch. And it's just stitched up and back. There it is stitched up and back and then slit. There's the placket. Oh my, now that, I think that, now that is called the fastest type it's of placket. It's called the fastest Absolutely placket. Absolutely fabulous. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about our a release tucks and pulled thread tucks and you might say well why would I bother to pull a thread here's an example of the same wing needle same thread same stitch same setting and here it is without pulling the thread and here it is pulling the thread can you see the difference Martha it in is the truly magnificent yeah the <laughs> open really work beautiful it almost looks like hard on girl. it's just beautiful it, there's just no end to hem stitching so to begin on the night shirt I, I simply marked where I wanted those tucks to come through and it may be difficult to see how far uh, you want to come down but just mark across and of course you're going to put these tucks in before you cut out the front because that will take up fullness and so we're going to create the fabric that's tucked okay. to uh, okay. bring that in then I pull those threads and I pulled four of the vertical grain threads out right up to that little point and how did I get them started right where I had my little marks I just took a tiny nip in the crosswise okay. and uh, that allowed me to pull those threads out but I have a little trick because the next step of course would be to fold that tuck so that you're matching up those pulled thread lines and then to stitch on those pulled thread lines but I'd like to give you a quick tip we have a great foot and this little foot is called an edge stitching foot I'm going to snap it on I generally hem stitch with my standard a foot because it's totally solid on the bottom and it okay. applies more pressure to the fabric you don't get any puckering now lots of people like open toe personal preference but here's a trick for you to see how far apart to put those I'm going to bring my presser foot down there's a little bar right on this side of the foot that that tuck is going to run along and I'm just going to start at the end and take one little stitch but I'm not really going to take a stitch I'm set with my hem stitch I'm going to just remove my fabric now and look what I've got I've got two holes and that's where I'm going to pull the threads so that um, <laughs> so that marked it to use that foot as a guide okay so isn't that this easy? is good <laughs> isn't that easy <laughs> it really of, is of course once you've done that now this one's a little bit narrower tuck and uh, so you have the option of doing it either way I have set you called it Point de Paris you can call it of course uh, Madeira pin stitch that's right uh, you can call it there are several other names actually but I'm stitching with the main part of that edge and of course I could mirror image it and so the other way but this just makes sense right in the hole in the pull thread area so that the left needle part of it when the needles in the left position it's actually sewing right there and I would touch fix at the end and tie off but I want to know what do you think about that I think that is beautiful and sue the pulled thread this is the first time I've ever seen pulled thread Madeira applique, point de Perry, or pen stitch. Now, is that the 120 wing needle you've used there? Actually, this is this is the 100 wing needle. The you could even get a bigger needle. hole with the 120 okay, wing needle. Okay, Isn't that fun? Okay. But I promised a little secret, didn't oh, I? Yes, you a little did. Secret. On how to do embroidery when you don't have an embroidery machine? Well, you can of course do decorative stitch embroidery, and uh, I've marked these with little one, two, three, four, so you can get the idea. And the colors of thread make a big difference. But first. 
program a decorative leaf, and this is of course easy to do, just enter the leaf, and then enter several straight stitches to leave some space, and then enter one more leaf in a mirror image position. Now sew that string, leaf, stitch, 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 mirror image leaf. Okay. Leaf, stitch, stitch, stitch. So sew it down the whole length of where you want it. And of course, on this little, uh, this beautiful piece, I put it all the way down, a lot of it around the collar, around the hems, around the cuffs. And uh, so once that's stitched, then come back and touch leaf and stop, and then add a little leaf out to the side of every first leaf. Oh, okay, right. well, very easy. Yeah. Well, then, it just looks like you have an embroidery machine. It there. does. Come back and add a little leaf out to the left of every second leaf. Okay. Are you with me? I'm going to slide this up a little bit and show you that we're going to select another decorative stitch, stop, and now go back and drop in that stitch in those spaces where we had those uh, straight okay. stitches, but now we've put a different color on because it's a flower. Another leaf. It's still the leaf that well, became no, a this flower. Well, no, it's, it's a new stitch. Oh, it's a, di okay. a different little decorative stitch. And now we'll add another one out to the side and another one out to the side. And in doing that, we actually can utilize our decorative stitches in program. You know, even if you couldn't program, you could create some embroideries by combining decorative stitches. Well, this is absolutely beautiful, Sue. I think this uh, is wonderful nightshirt with your, I just love that pull thread. We needlework, the pull thread Madeira applique stitch. And I'm just thinking how comfy this would be to wear. Oh, absolutely, and it would get even, and you know what, this is one of those linen fibers that's going to hold up mm -hmm. for the next 200 years unless something drastic happens to it. And thank you so much, Sue, oh, you're for welcome. joining me today. It's always a pleasure to have you here in Martha's Sewing Room. Next, we have a beautiful home decorating project for you. I am very, very, very thrilled with this little pillow we have for you. It's kind of a checkerboard pillow, but as you look at it, I want to show you some wonderful things you can do with it. Now, then you can see this is done, made out of a silk dupioni and then some decorative tapestry. These are fabrics traditionally used for home decorating in any room of the house. But I want to share with you what I really think would be fun with this pillow, this checkerboard pillow. First of all, if you have any decorative stitches on your machine, uh, such as, I mean, you know, embroidery, I'm sorry, not decorative stitches, you could put an embroidery design here, maybe to celebrate the birth of a baby, put the baby's name up here, the date of the birth here, the parents here and the grandparents here. Now then, it would also be nice to use for a holiday celebration, maybe to have some kind of Christmas decoration here, or you know, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus here, and the little angels up above, or if, if you want just to use Christmas trees and then Christmas toys. But this type of pillow lends itself well to all kinds of embellishment. Now I'm going to sew some braid on this pillow in just a few minutes, and I have a foot here that you may have one for your machine like this. Now this is a candle wicking foot meant for candle wicking. I'm not going to use it for candle wicking, but the point I want to say is look through all of your feet that go with your machine or see if there is one available that has a deep groove in the back. That is the best kind for sewing on any kind of braid. Now, I guess you, you don't have to have a groove, but it just makes braid sewing a lot easier. Now, I'm going to slip this foot on the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make this pillow. First of all, you simply work with squares. Now you can see how much this silk dupioni ravels. I love it anyway. Sew it and then put them together checkerboard square. As you can see, I have put all of it together and I've even stitched it and I'm going to turn this back. It is now time for me to put my, um, I'm going to put the uh, braid on. Okay, I'm going to slip it under this foot that has a groove. I'm going to get my pretty gold braid. I have my machine just set on the automatic uh, zigzag you know, when, you, when, you, when you set it, how it comes up. Now then, I have everything ready to go. I'm, I have, I'm in the groove, and I have this wonderful candle wicking foot, which, and you know what, let me get my shish kebab stick. I always like to have my shish kebab stick, and I'm going to come out of here and just hold a little bit out here, and then I will sew just a little bit. If I sew over the shish kebab stick, it won't matter at all. All right, I've got, oh, let me see, my width, is t uh, my width is three and my length is two, so it's just wh whichever one came up on this sewing machine I'm ready to sew with. And now then I'm going to go over some of those seams and this, this braid is going to be just held in place real, real nicely by that groove. It's just so nice to have a braiding foot. And you don't have to have a braiding foot. Now you can certainly do this just with a regular foot, but see I'm sewing over a pretty good seam back there, so it's really nice to be able to have it. Now then, let me just show you how pretty that is after it's finished. 
See, my braid has been sewn on there. Now let's go ahead and finish up this pillow. I've got to make some piping. So I'm going to, I like fat piping, so I'm going to get some fat piping cord. I have a piece of straight fabric. I simply put my fat piping cord in there, fold it over, and with my zipper foot, I will go up against the edge, make my piping. As you can see, I've made my piping there. And then I will go ahead, get the back piece of my cushion ready. Let me get my front piece of the cushion ready. Put the piping in the edges, sew all around it, and that is one of the world's easiest pillows. Now let's go back and look at this pillow just one more minute. See, there really isn't anything to making this pillow. If you want to know the truth, I think this could be cut out, completed in an hour or less. But it's just a wonderfully versatile pillow if you love to do sampler things. This is kind of a sampler quilt and pillow style. And next, I would like for you to come along to my attic where I have something very special for you. I'm very honored to have today in my attic Sue Houseman's grandmother's wedding dress. This dress was the fabrics were sent from Switzerland by another sister for a sister in Oregon to make. Look at the beautiful tucks around the neckline, the beautiful Swiss embroideries, and I especially love the mitered uh, groups of trims on the collar. See that pretty miter there? And then more tucks. But you know, I just love these sleeves. I think they're so pretty. And it has more of the Swiss trim over there. And then the little um, sleeves have trim on the end. Now this waistline is perfectly beautiful. And Sue said that this waistline is about 21 inches. And I'll tell you what, my waist I don't think was ever 21. Isn't that magnificent the way it has the little triangle shape there? Very flattering that comes up you know, up under the bust. And then it has the pretty faggoting that goes down the sides. The side panels are put in with the Swiss faggoting. And then I want you to look at this wonderful trim on the skirt. It has the beautiful Swiss trim as well as just um, another underskirt with a little bridal train down the back. That is such a magnificent piece. And what a family treasure. And I'm very honored that Sue brought that dress to share with us. I have a really beautiful sewing from the heart from my friend Sue Barrows, who is from Mount Gambier, South Australia. Sue writes, I have been smocking We Care gowns for our local hospital for six years. We live in a small community of 25,000 people, with our two nearest cities being 350 miles away. After reading about the We Care gowns, I knew this was going to be a project for me. When I approached our local hospital with my sample gowns, they embraced the idea enthusiastically, and away I went to sew and embroider. Twenty years before, we had lost one of our twin girls, and when I started sewing the tiny gowns, it encouraged one of my other two daughters to ask questions for which I had no answers. She consequently took it on herself to find out those answers which she felt I needed to know. We now know where our little girl is buried and have been able to visit her grave. I thought I was helping others at their time of grief. I had no idea what a healing process for myself I was undertaking. Sue first shared this story with me when we were teaching, when I was teaching in Penrith, Australia a couple of years ago. She told me how much the volunteer sewing had been in her life and I said, Sue, tell me a little bit about it. She told me this very, very beautiful story. And I said, now, Sue, I don't ever ask people to share things that they would not like to share. But if you would like to think about this, and if you would like to share this story, I feel that there are many people that will be in the viewing audience that possibly have gone through this same kind of grief and maybe haven't been able to heal. I know in my family, we lost, my sister lost a little boy at the hands of a drunk driver a number of years ago. And I think anything that we can do with our sewing machines, and we know this is about sewing from the heart, to help people heal is certainly what we ought to do and encourage other people to do. Sue, I, I want to thank you for sharing this story. And I want to thank Sue Houseman for bringing her grandmother's beautiful wedding dress to share. And I want to mostly thank you for joining me in Martha's Sewing Room today. I just love it when you come to see me. And I would also like to invite you to come back next time. Thank you.